Never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. morning everybody it is saturday the end of the corporate age i actually actually feel like it is the end of the corporate age i, I think we're, we're doing a lot of damage um, in that regard to to um, what corporations are and, and and eventually they will lose their power however i feel like it's the beginning of a fascist age for the united states and that we have to stop that very quickly um and, and I, I actually think there's been a lot of movement on the streets and, and a lot of stuff going on physically, right, um, as nonviolent as it can be to, to fight fascism. And I'm, I'm really impressed with that. We're going to be focusing on that um, a lot more with uh, Progressive Oregon and other shows um, talking about how we fight fascism. We're going to talk to some German people, Marcus, or some other Europeans about, about ways we can do that that might be smarter than what we do here because they have some more experience fighting fascism that we do um good morning everybody um and, and just i just want to jump in real quick we're not going to talk about it but i'm just curious eco if you could tell me why you think assange is a fascist just curious um anyway we have um we have marcus and laura here with us today good mm-hmm. morning you two how you doing we haven't, we haven't both made it on here for a couple of weeks now I know. Nice it's crazy. yeah quite a time good morning Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. We've got Jeff and Cindy and Brom and Human and Eco. Who else is in here? Scroll it up. Okay. Lynn. Lynn got to meet uh, 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 Nita Turner, right? Yes. And, hey. d- did you do the Did you do the parade? No, it's on the fourth. And then you're going to be marching with Bernie. I mean, that's awesome. Nice. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you for saying uh, hey from UHM, and we got a hey back from Nina. So. Oh yes, that. please, please. I think she, I think she knows who we are now, and I think yes. that's cool. She knows who we are. Yes. Nina Turner knows who we are. Jank Uger does not. Yeah. Just do <laughs> Someday Jank Uger will know who we are and still won't give a fuck because <laughs> he's Jank Uger. Yeah. Everything um. in the revolution is thanks to Tyt home of the progressives right after we realized we needed to stop talking about Hillary in 2015. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> just just want to clarify that for Cheng. Your right. station was still talking about Hillary while we were broadcasting Bernie. But you can be home of the progressives just because more people watch you anyway. And I get that. That's fine. Well, you got to hand it to him. He was the he's the only person who's been covering Alex Casio. You know, the only here. network from the only beginning. Network. Yeah. Yes. Oh. All jangle all the time. So anyway, I mean, it was great. He was first, but he we was. are right on his on his heels. But I'm jumping ahead to our yeah. It's a, okay, so I'm being butt hurt. I'm just having fun talking about jank. <laughs> in really, in terms of perspective, when you think about what we're fighting, the rise of fascism, corporations raping the planet, still um, government wholly out of control, can't tell the difference between cops and terrorists and ICE and terrorists and Nazis and ICE and cops and terrorists. They're all kind of about the same. Really, my little butthurt dispute with Jank and TYT is completely meaningless. Don't really mm-hmm. care. We're all working towards the same goal of informing the electorate. And recently with the Ocasio, uh, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez win, all of a sudden MSM are experts on progressiveness. Yes. <laughs> Have you guys noticed yeah. this? Yeah. There's just, yeah. everybody knows, what, and, and they know how she won, and and uh, it's just amazing. Yeah. The coattail writers. Coattails, coattails. Yeah, yeah I, heard, I saw the headline. I did not see the clip. Evidently, she really um, impressed the gals at The View, which is 
Uh, yes, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. she, she was impressive, you know. But oh, sorry is, about that. For, for us, for us, it is nothing new because we know how great she is. We we know we knew her for, we interviewed her nearly a year ago. You know? mm -hmm. and, uh, we did. Yeah, and since then we uh, yeah we had all hopes that she would make it. We mm -hmm. uh, we certainly um, um, expected that it would be um, a very narrow uh, a race, you know, and with maybe the better end for her. But we did not expect what happened then on yeah. Tuesday. You know? It was absolutely fantastic. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was a little a little yeah hit a joy that like kind of like what we used to feel like when when bernie had some good primaries those couple couple times where he kicked ass and you know western yes stuff. yes it was it was very important it was important yeah. a sign for 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 every pro progressive you know it was mm -hmm. it, it was it was a day you could uh, you could be happy again for yeah. uh, since a long time my opinion, yeah. right <laughs> Even, it even, was. Even, it was. Even, it, there was joy. I felt. I felt some political joy on Tuesday, yeah. and it just so decisive and so early. By the time we even came on to cover the returns, it had already. They were already starting to call it for, which was great. We we didn't have to sit here all night, you know, nibbling our finger fingernails. But uh, yeah, just yeah. the joy yeah. that you know the shot of her, you know, at which I think we probably have it on. Uh, oh, one of we our do. Pictures. We have. Like it. So are we jumping ahead to where we're going to talk about? Oh, we're just all over the about? place. I'm actually looking at comments from people right now because there's quite a lot of interesting comments. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Cindy Matthews, Jenk Uger is in love with himself. I agree. Oh, yeah. He's just oh, got yeah. a huge ego. That's what bothers me. I think what TYT is doing is fantastic. Yes. I think what Jenk started is amazing. I just think he thinks he is amazing, too. And he mm -hmm. talks about that a lot. And I just think he needs to give some credit where it's due. Right. He did give yeah. credit to Kyle Kalinske. Great for him. You know, mm -hmm. and, and Justice Dems gets the credit for, you know, helping, you know, providing the platform and everything that that uh, Al, you know, Alexandria ran on and every goddamn volunteer that actually got out and did the work. Right. Mm -hmm. This wasn't about raising a gazillion dollars and making a bunch of videos and winning, although her right. social media presence mm -hmm. and her camp and her social media campaigning mm -hmm. was top notch and should be followed, even though they're talking about the hustle. What she did in social media, what they did, yeah. what they did in social media was absolutely brilliant. And it did require a lot of effort and it did require a lot of planning. It wasn't the haphazard piss in the wind shit that we see from other campaigns. So, you know, mm -hmm. let's keep that in mind that she inv they invested time and energy into making good videos yeah. campaign ads are absolutely essential and they did the rounds you know when we contacted them immediately about an interview they were on the interview right mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, anybody yeah. that could that wanted her to be interviewed they went with i mean this is you mm -hmm. know they were smart so yeah anyway. her ground game was flawless it was we got other comments uh, 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 our, darcy says are jenk and nina doing a show called we the people i didn't know it was jenk and nina I just heard Nina was doing a podcast and calling it We the People and whatever. That's kind of a generic. Mm -hmm. It's not like we own the brand name or anything. Hmm. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we should change this. Oh, Barbara's asking. Uh, this is great. Marcus, did did, uh, did yes. I wake you up when I pinged you on Tuesday night? Yeah, at, at least you tried. <laughs> but, you know, but I wasn't in, in dreamland at that time. Yes. I, yes, I, I gotta I gotta say that I uh, I had my alarm record uh, on five thirty that time because uh -huh. I expected not to uh, to early results, uh, but I completely failed and I uh, woke up uh, a little later and uh -huh. uh, yeah everything was done then and uh, well but I had a broad smile you know it hurt my face for for the next following three days because <laughs> <laughs> it, it went from this year to this year you know and nice. it was pretty, pretty ridiculous that was nice that was really that nice. Was nice. I just wanted to go through a couple of the comments. You guys are saying some great stuff. Hi, Froze. Hey, TC Townsend. I appreciate that we are your home, and I appreciate your donations and everybody else who's been donating recently. Yes. I see that. Badasses. see that. Thank you. Um, we got some great stuff, great stuff in the works that you will be um, you will be seeing that your dollars are investing in real soon. Mm -hmm. It's not just our faces that you're paying for. <laughs> And we all get an email every time you do it. And we do. It comes in and someone took action and it says your name and we give a little prayer and we do. Say, and we don't we don't thank people enough by name. I think. So well, it's it's sometimes you know who you are and people. thank you. Yeah. Um, Brahm says MSM has totally jumped a shark. Louise yeah. uh, Louise Squire says I have been totally I've been really disillusioned until Alexandria went. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I think she's like the Bernie Sanders of 2018. Mm -hmm. Right. And she's yeah. already being attacked like the Bernie Sanders of 2018, mm -hmm. right? 
which I mean, she's doing something right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, she the, gave us an example of a ground game and a, and a campaign. Her campaign was, was amazing. And it, she chose, you know, the right, she was at the right place at the right time. But I'm just I, 28 years old. My gosh, that's my daughter's age. Yeah. yeah that's it's amazing. I'm, yeah. Yeah. And I just, the best, I just got to say this real quick before I forget it. The slam article I've seen that's been going around the most is, well, if Democrats think they can win with this, you know, they're going to lose all the swing voters. And it's like, well, then fuck them. <laughs> fuck the swing voters. I, and then the, the best comment I saw on swing voters was swing voters, the unicorn dick of the Democratic Party, because they're basically like, oh, can't, don't touch the imaginary swing voters. Well, if swing voters want to live in a democracy as opposed to a fascist Nazi state, then they'll vote right. So, you know, the thing there is, you go. The, the thing is, in, in my opinion, they are referring to uh, the voters they know, to those who, uh, who are registered, you know. But we saw what uh, Alexandra did in New York 14. She approached the people who were not known. They were the unknown mass or the unknown people in this in this case right. who made the difference. And by large numbers, if you look at the total, uh, the total result. Agreed. Right? Okay. And this is exactly this is exactly, and she and she said it in so in uh, so many interviews later, uh, that um, her effort would be um, to to join to join the people, you know, apart from uh, from uh, party borders and apart from in, uh, independence, etc. You know, if, if if the message is right, and this is what we've seen, if the message is right, and the person is authentic who stands behind this message, you can move a lot, you can move so much, you know, and uh, this is. Uh, <laughs> this is why uh, why um, I, I'm absolutely convinced that she will make her way. You know, she will, might be in in the, uh, in, in, the in, in the in the house later um, in November or January. Uh, maybe a small number in the beginning, but um, if if you see her and if you know her, how she can approach people, I think she can be a bridge builder also. And um, I hope that there are some others also joining her. You know, because this. Uh, this inspiration uh, sh should be followed. What she what she did. Yes, absolutely. That, cl that clip of her debate that we've that we posted, you guys, it, we had like twelve thousand views on Monday, and we're up to fifty six thousand views of it today. Yeah, it immediate people immediately Shh. started searching for her. Stop! Don't tell anybody. Stop! This doesn't belong to us. Don't <laughs> tell anybody. It's Spectrum Media. So just, just so you know, we did get shut down on the other video because uh, MSNBC didn't like the fact that I'd scraped that content from Morning Joe. Somebody manually, they had to manually come by, notice it, and hit the, I'm going to take that down button. That, that takes time. So just know that there is somebody who is paid at MSNBC to notice our video content. Okay, just think about yeah. that for a minute. All right. Yeah. They blocked that. I used like a minute and a half of their shit. Not even a minute and a half, like like. 45 seconds of their shit. Anyway, there's a few but that, things. But the, my, my, yeah, my point being on the on that video, though, is that 22 minutes was if anybody asks me about her or asks me about what um, progressives should look like, I think that's a great example. Absolutely. And it's, such a, it's just such a, and it's such a perfect juxtaposition to just the type of politicians that we don't want and that we don't trust and that we're trying to replace. It was just, it's just in 22 minutes, just brilliant. It is. So it's, I'm, yeah. Yeah. So I hope you don't get shut down. No, I, that's my point is that I don't, that. you know, I mean, I'm glad it's out there and I'm glad it's getting mm -hmm. shit ton of views, but I'm surprised Spectre Media hasn't come by. My, my other point on that was to say that media belongs to the public. Mm -hmm. If we were actually enforcing our First Amendment rights around political speech, political speech the First yeah. Amendment clearly states that political speech belongs to the people. But where that got fucked up is the 1996 Telecom Act, where now all of yeah. a sudden our political speech can be turned into ratings ploys by corporate media. And corporate media comes by and says, no, wait a minute, we own that. And we say, yeah. but it's political speech. Is he no? Because we have Wolf Blitzer and Rachel Maddow, and they make it a big show. And you can't take our content. We own that content. It costs us a lot of money. No, you chose to host a fucking debate of politics. Belongs to the people. Fuck you, right? Yeah. And so I hope Spectrum appreciates that. You want to take all the money from it, Spectrum? I don't give a fuck. Take the money. It's not about the money, right? But taking this, taking this taking this video down would be comparable to being an in in a, in a, in a incumbent candidate in a, in a race and not showing up to the first two debates, right? Yeah. 
I guess. Yeah, sure. Well, it, what it amounts to is censorship. It's the same shit that happened in Nazi Germany where they were burning books. Yeah, and, and it happens in the country, country, you, know? you know. So anyway, I just wanted to make that point. And I want to say a few other things. There's a lot of comments I'd like to get there. I know we want to talk about Alexandria for the whole time. We're not going to be able to. Larry Taylor has invaded our chat and said it would be great to raise $1,000 this weekend so we can pay our bills. He's right. That's cool. It would be great. Um, if you guys don't know, Larry Taylor spends a good deal of his time doing all the really boring, horrible, businessy bullshit that has to do with Uphill Media as a nonprofit and spreadsheets and lets me do this and complain and cuss and shit. So, um, please, you know, anything you can do to help. And if you've already donated or you're tapped out, share it with somebody else. And if you know any rich folks like Susan Sarandon, tell them we'd love them to come by. We've got a media network it can be yours. Cheap. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> We're, and, and and just no. just real quick, I want to say this publicly because some troll came by, and and I just I I want to do this because this will be fun. Troll came by and said, "Oh, look, you're broadcasting out of your mommy's basement." Um, no, my mommy's dead. She died of cancer in 2014. Maybe that would have been you know fixed before then had we had national health care that actually fucking worked, um, and was focused on healing people and not making fucking money. And this is my garage, not my basement. And yeah, I would love to get it the fuck out of my garage and put it in a building and do more with it because unless we support independent media, we're going to have a really hard time getting our people to win, right? Alex, Xandria Ocasio-Cortez was a beautifully perfect example. You cannot overlook the fact that she had every single thing right and it's going to be very difficult for us to get every single thing right for every candidate. So we have to use all the resources we have, and that includes media, right? So, um, yeah, it's it's crucial. It's, mm -hmm. it's crucial. I've been saying this for a long fucking time, and you guys have always come through, and I don't know what we do to step up the game. So I'm hoping the new people that are coming, the, the, you know, there's been a surge of, of uh, subscribers, a surge of interest in our channel again, and I think it's a lot to do with the fact that we've got these elections coming and things are building. Um, support your candidates first. Support the entities that support your candidates second. All right? Yeah. Join an entity to volunteer or join a campaign to help a candidate. You got to do both. You got to do both if you want to survive. You got to. A couple other things. Uh, real quick, Melissa H. says she was with uh, Lynn Vermont yesterday, and that's fucking mm -hmm. awesome. I have five video clips that Lynn got um, with Nina Turner. This is what's so freaking cool, right? I mean, Nina Turner knows uphill media. She knows all the media. She's big, huge, right? She took the time... I think yesterday to uh, record a short video for Lynn of our volunteers uh, for her daughter's birthday. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That wasn't done as a optics ploy so that Nina could get good ratings and win an election. Right. Hmm. That's done because she's a good human being and she cares and she cares about all the volunteers and all the people that are involved in, this, in, in the, the progressive movement. And that's how we have to think of each other. Right. So even though I think Jake's got a Jake Uger's got a big fat head, I really, really appreciate what Jank is doing for the progressive movement. Even yes. if we can disagree on some of the ways he's presenting material, he is still doing more good than harm, right? Yes. So we got to yeah. look at it that way. Yeah, that yeah. that is a, an important point. Yeah, you know, it would yeah. just be nice if he would acknowledge that there are other people that are that are tr trying to do the same thing and uh, support each other. Yeah. Besides Kyle. Man, there's been a lot of comments, and I totally missed Brom with five bucks. Uh, Hail Sagan. Uh, yeah. And it's beautiful to see Hail our Sagan. starting to Hail Sagan. elections. <laughs> Thank you, Brom. Let's Thank keep you. the momentum going. Thank, thank you very much. That was a sweet, sweet little evening there. And thank you, Randy O'Roberts. I know you guys are donating. You guys are doing it. MSM, MSNBC likes Uphill Media. They don't like Sims? us. What did you <laughs> they... Sims? <laughs> <laughs> They bother to spend the time with us, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, blocking us. Thank you, guys. But I'm pretty sure. But I'm I'm pretty sure, guys. I'm pretty sure that some of those absolutely clueless journalists from the mainstream media watched our "We the People" clip with Alexandria yeah. to get info, to get the first information. I can. Yes. Do you I think so? My money on this. Yes, we had oh, a big absolutely. jump. Absolutely. We had a big jump of views on that one as well. Oh yeah. 
Well, then I'm waiting to get contacted. You were great yeah. as a host. We'd like to hire you. No. <laughs> We, Why does it never get to that point? We, I don't. We, know. You know what is it? Was it was it the hair? Because I know I, <laughs> I I know I was still rocking the you know the mullet at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe it was the mullet. Okay, and I think now we can we can tell the, a big secret. Tomorrow is the first of July. It is our last month here with Apple Media at YouTube. Uh, tomorrow we will start our new career at CNN. <laughs> Yeah, that would be. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was supposed to happen on oh, April yeah. Fool's Day, Marcus. You're in the yes. wrong month. Yes. You told me uh, uh, July the first. April Fool's. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, do you guys have a Discord server? No, Jasmine. no, we're on. No, Jasmine, we're on Slack. Yeah, we do Slack. Welcome to join. Yeah. Hey, Jim Lockett. Man, there's a lot of people here today. How many people are here? We got 48 with 80 playbacks. Holy cow! We had 50 Hi, a minute ago. Sorry, you guys. All right, now we're gonna cut. We're we're gonna get back to Alex. There's other stuff we can talk about, but I actually have to show you guys some other things that is that are important. Um, really quick, we're gonna go over some stuff because we're yes. we're changing, we're shifting a lot of what we're doing to focus on strategy and um, education and and real stuff that other people would really find really boring it's the farthest thing from entertainment television you're going to get the cover card really quick everybody is the fact that portland police we all know that they look like you know a, a terrorist force these days but um the, the situation with occupy ice has gotten really um that's frightening right so they did occupy ice it was very successful shut down the ice building Ted Wheeler said that Portland police would not be involved in helping ICE. Portland police were not involved until uh, protesters blocked a road. And then Portland police jumped in and said, oh, well, we can fuck with that. And so then they arrested people. The more frightening thing, and that's what they look like. That's Portland police. Because everybody needs a giant fucking baton to arrest a peaceful protester. You know? That's what they look like. And, and you can't see, but they have these giant knee pads on. Like they're like, we're ready to beat the fuck out of you and install your carpet. You know, <laughs> it's like, I don't even know what the fuck this shit is. Yeah, and, the face masks and the those the batons and the guns and the mace. And it's like, yeah, they're yeah. loaded for bear. Hi, we're public servants. We're, we're here to, what are you here to do, cops? You're certainly not here to protect me. You're certainly not here to be peaceful. You know. The more frightening thing is that the Department of Homeland Security, wearing uniforms that said police on them, were the ones that were manhandling and arresting our protesters because apparently they can do that. That's a 9-11 thing. Well, didn't the Portland mayor say he, say he didn't want his... Right, and they didn't. Yeah. They didn't help ICE. What they did was as soon as the protesters blocked the street, that became a civil matter or whatever the fuck they call it in police world land. And so then they were able to fuck with them. Right. So Ted held, kept his word, sort of, okay? Right. Anyway, that's the first thing. We got a big problem with that. We're going to be talking more about that tomorrow on Progressive Oregon. We're going to have a German. You might know him. His name's Marcus. And he's going to talk with some uh, of the, hopefully they're not in jail. Uh, we're still counting on at least one of the protesters we know of uh, from Occupy ICE PDX and the, and the movement of, of just Occupy ICE in Oregon. Talk about their tactics, talk about what's next, talk about how we can help them, and talk about how this is kind of becoming a thing uh, across the country. This is what we need to do. This is like the step we do before we have to literally go get our pitchforks and literally stick them into fascists, right? This is where we rise en masse and still try peacefully to shut this shit down, right? It's like right there. <laughs> We're so close. We're so close to just all out. So I hope between the Ocasio win and a surge of progressiveness and our peaceful actions en masse against ICE, we can keep this thing from going full on bloody. But man, we are so close. I can feel it. Everybody can feel it. Everybody's tense, and irritated, or depressed. It's like, you, you know, your emotions go from one thing to the next. And, and this is all outside of the Trump bubble of distraction, right? Where he's doing something every day that everybody is like, what the fuck, right? 
I will say my favorite of his things, and then we're going to move on into the other important thing, is yesterday, if you heard, a prank caller got in while he was on Air Force One and pretended to be Senator Bob Menendez and got all sorts of great information about Trump's illegal SCOTUS pick, which is going to put him in a position to reverse Roe v. Wade, and then I think we'll have blood in the streets. You reverse Roe v. Wade, and yeah, I, I don't see women sitting down for that one. You know, a- again, it's a catalyst, right? It's a catalyst. So while Trump is making a fool of himself talking on Air Force One, Congress getting ready to reverse more laws, right? That's, that's what goes on. So tomorrow we're going to have uh, a discussion uh, at Progressive Oregon fascism. I don't have that card loaded. This is what we just did. And I just want to remind everybody that we are working on a weekly planning session. Uh, it's when it's generally Wednesdays at seven or 8 PM. This is open to all Oregonians, progressives who, anybody who wants to fix what's going on uh, in, in, in the, the, in, in Oregon. And, uh, the last one we had was about targeting, uh, incumbents and the criteria and prioritization for that. We, uh, I'm in the process of working with Justin Bryce, uh, Larry Taylor, and some other folks on building a uh, GIS database in databasin.org. Go to databasin.org. Anybody who's interested in getting involved with that project, uh, info at uphillmedia.org. Create an account on databasin.org and let me know that you want to be involved with it. Um, basically, it's a lot of data entry, a lot of data collection, and we're going to create a layered map that lets us... Um, uh, basically have an overview of everything we need to do to strategize and plan for 2020. Target selection, candidate selection, and everything they need to fucking run and win. And we're just going to map it out. Just, I, I think we've got all the resources we need to do it. So you're welcome to join in those discussions. We need your help. We need all the orgs. One of the reasons I'm going to join DSA is just so I can bring them into this discussion. Right? Um, I'd like all the Bernie groups to start talking to each other. And that's really the other purpose of this is to talk with each other. We need to work together and strategize and kick some serious ass and get rid of these corporate Dems and, and, and Republicans out of Oregon. Oregon should have made like light years of progress if it really was as goddamn progressive as it claims to be. But we're not. The Dems that sit in, at the top in Oregon collect dust and do nothing to move progress forward. So we're going to change that. I'm tired of that. Also, last thing, this is important though, this is like upcoming, but this is really tomorrow. I want to say this to all, everybody. Robert's Rules of Order is how we control the party in meetings. You want to learn how to run a meeting? You want to learn how to control a party? You want to learn how to say, "Uh uh-uh, you don't get to do that. Point of order, fuck you. You don't get to do that. You can't just pound the gavel and walk out. Okay? If you... That's not what you really say. If you want to know what you really say to make that happen, watch this tomorrow at 12.30. Larry Taylor, who is a credentialed parliamentarian, some high up in level knows what he's talking about with uh, Robert's Rules of Order, is going to explain to us the basics and the most important aspects of how to run a meeting and how to make sure the meeting's going right. We all need to know this. We'll be live streaming more of these because Larry's got this whole thing going on with a group of people that are very interested in this. And this is, this is across everybody, right? These rules apply to all the Dem meetings and every meeting that agrees to run by Robert's Rules of Order, Parliamentary Procedures. So um, please get involved with that. That's, that's tomorrow at 1230 Pacific. And I just wanted to show you these pictures real quick. This is the graphic, the GIS interface. This, is, um, this already exists in databasing. And Justin Bryce and the League of Conservation Voters put this together. This is a database that shows you the Oregon Senate, Oregon House, and it shows you the districts, and it ranks them in the color coding based on the voter record in terms of conservation. So where it's really red, that's Republican, and they don't give a shit about the environment. Where it's really green, it's Democratic, and they give a shit about the environment. Everything in between is your shades. This is one layer of criteria that we're going to use to prioritize and choose our incumbent targets. But it's also just a great resource for you to know who cares about what based on their voting record in Oregon. And we're going to do this data set for all, not just House and Senate, 
all the shit. It's going to take us a while, but this is how we target everybody, right? So, all right, that's, that's it. Where are we at now? Are we, are we back on to the Ocasio montage? Is that red? Is that red part? Is that District 2? Yeah, or is that by District 2? District 2 is actually... The red and the yellow? It's all of the red, the lower red square there. So, and it actually, okay. it's, so the red and yellow yeah. patch, that's District 2. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. I thought Altogether. it was the whole eastern side of the state, and I thought that, okay. But that's broken up by Senate and, and House yellow, districts. What does the yellow mean? It's just the yellow is a lesser, they're not as bad as red in terms of conservation voting. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So. Interesting. But there's other, Division. there's other, we can do other data different ways in there, right? Interesting. I see, yeah. So it'll be fun to do that. So is that down in the corner? Is that Eugene, where that in that in in that area with the little green at the bottom? I don't know. That's an interesting question. What it's is like this little this little green <clears throat> pod? Well, you can see so the you can see that that's the Willamette River Valley, right? Right. It kind of runs. That's the five really. Well. I don't know what that little pocket is down there. That's that's what is that little <laughs> pocket? Everybody, we find that out. It looks like it. Well, it looks like Cottage Grove and well, Je uh, Jeffrey Pearson. Is that Cottage Grove and Eugene area down there? I should know this, you know. I know. Yeah, I know. Here's, <laughs> uh, well, I'll find out because I can. You can also lay the topographical map and just look at that. And and well, yeah. I have actually. Did I have a shot of that? Hang on, let me see if I have a shot of that. Yeah. So here, oh. this is more irritating. This is a shot of another layer set. This is all the cities. Right. Ah. So we can really use this to do a lot of things if we want to plan stuff. Well, where's a city near whatever? Here's how you see the cities. Okay. So there's all sorts of data we can we can uh, pull into lay on this. I'd love to know. So Jeffrey I mean. says yes. So I'm assuming he's saying yes to my question. Is that Eugene Cottage Grove area? So yeah, that's right. Because right where the five, it's right where the five crosses into. So that's where you are, right, Oregon. Jeff? Isn't that where? Yeah, yeah he's okay. in Cottage Grove. Yeah. Which isn't too far from me. Yeah. Too bad the res is a communist. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, where's that slide, Marcus? Which one is it? Red Scare. The. Oh, uh, no, yeah. no, it was it was only on my Facebook. Oh, okay. it, was, it was a headline of the New York Post uh, on uh, Wednesday morning. Oh, and I know. It, it, it didn't say it didn't say red red, red, uh, red wave. It said red alert. The red alert. Right, but yeah. the post was making fun. That you know. But everybody. I don't else, know that if they're making fun. They're they're um, uh, yeah. They're, they're like, uh, the post is pretty. The post is pretty. I I thought that was said in on the post. I would think that would be done in you know uh, in jest, right. Everywhere else, I would agree. I mean, mm. where's the Hannity slide? That's my favorite, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's, oh, yeah. Uh, but before, but before we go back to Alexander, I would uh, suggest we have a quick look at the primaries in Maryland and Colorado. All right. This is Marcus's right? show. And, we'll just... Uh, and... <laughs> the Rational National was... Oh, okay. Oregon, so. We are going to slide 21, 22 at first. And... All right. All right. Yeah. So, 21, huh? So Maryland, is that what we're looking at here? Yes, exactly. And uh, as we know, it was not only New York who had primaries last Tuesday, also in Maryland. And there was um, uh, Bill uh, Benjellis uh, running for uh, the govern uh, government of office. And uh, yeah, he succeeded. He won and he is in the, uh, in the general election now in November. Uh, not that good was it for, uh, but still impressing was it for Chelsea Manning. Uh, she came in ranked uh, second and uh, for her first run, I think. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Well, no. She kind of, it she is kind a of quite played. good uh, result, 32,000 yeah. votes. I think, uh, okay, right? Well. If only she hadn't imploded at the end of her campaign. Yeah, she, she had a, yeah. 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 Yeah, but maybe but, next the, but she got out there and did it and got her, you know, got her name. And, and so that's, you know. That's true. She's got some clout. I think that she might be better supporting um, another candidate to start. Not, I don't know about her running for office. Right. All right, so uh, Colorado. Yeah, in Colorado, we had the situation a couple of weeks ago. We talked about what happened to... Uh, uh, let me see, to Lily Tillerman, you know, who was approached by Stanley Hoyer, uh, who gave him the message that, yeah, that your uh, run for the office is uh, is over because the decision were already made uh, at a higher place. And, uh, yeah, that he also can uh, drop out of the race, you know. And you can see the results. Yes, um, Jason Crow, the guy, uh, is, is uh, the incumbent, uh, the, the opponent, uh, he won with 66%. And, uh, yeah, the establishment... Uh, 
was successful in this race, unfortunately. Well, I'm, curi- I'm curious um, to know what, what percentage he would have gotten uh, had that news not broke about him being muscled. Right. Uh, the question is in, in, in how far uh, the establishment uh, um, acted in favor of Jason Crow, right? Well, right. Well, I, we know how much. No, we know how far they acted in in, in, in terms of Jason I mean, Crow. What I'm talking I mean, about is how much did the negative press of that incident affect people voting against Crow? OK, because people in Colorado are going to see that article. They're going to see what happened. So, you know, he got 34 percent. But obviously, the establishment had enough uh, 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 muscle and energy behind it to make sure that that Crow won, as opposed to Levy Tillman. Um, the, the other, mm-hmm. but the win that no, that we should be talking about, Mark, because you don't have a slide for is Emily Sirota, because she's a progressive. David Sirota is an independent journalist uh, who got a raw deal from Business Insider. Emily ran on a Bernie Sanders program, was was uh, uh, you know endorsed by our revolution, Bernie Sanders, and she won. So yeah. Yeah, where's that slide? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we don't have it. But uh, the coming back to the, uh, the question uh, is is also in how far uh, the different would uh, the result would be different if uh, Jason Crow had not the support of uh, the establishment and if uh, uh, and if he did not receive all the support money is ever from them. Well, sure. Well, then that would be called a fair right. election, and who knows? Yes, and what this is yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> So what's next? Yeah, next is yeah, and now we are coming back to New York 14. We're coming to the results, of Alexandria, <laughs> <laughs> to cover this, and there you can see 57.5 percent, 50,897 votes. Yeah, clear thing. We will see what happens in November with this guy Anthony Pappas, from which I know that uh, apparently he did not receive one single donation so far. And this is no call to uh, spend money on it, of course. Right. Yeah, this, the thing is clear, in my opinion, in November uh, or in January, uh, Alexandria will uh, will join the House. I hope so. Here's yeah. here's your, you want to go through your, your montage? Here's the face. Here we yeah. The, face. the moment it happens. Or to say with uh, Whitney Houston, one moment in time. Oh, we should have had that song, Marcus. <laughs> no, 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 we shouldn't. We've had some bad earworms this morning, and I apologize in advance to my Mar- Marcus uh, uh, reminded me that I didn't put Winds of Change into a Alexandria montage. So I, will I be did doing not that. remind you. I was happy you didn't. And I, it's a diff- well, one's coming. <laughs> there will be one coming. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So we got so, Joy Reid, my favorite. Yes, we got your favorite right now. And yeah, what do you think about this, John? <laughs> so first, I have to make a correction. I thought Joy Reid had unblocked me, and I was wrong. Joy Reid still blocks me, so I'm safe. <laughs> That's great. The show AM bullshit with Joy Reid or whatever it's called, Yeah. that... That has not blocked me ever. And for some reason now I'm seeing their tweets, unfortunate. And I thought, I was like, oh, Joy unblocked me, but it's not Joy. I'm still blocked. Yeah. And, and yeah. I thought maybe now that she has to learn who progressives are, they might want to learn about the, the networks that have actually been covering progressives while she's been throwing bullshit at progressives like Bernie Sanders from day one. But, you know, yeah. now they're going to be the network of progressives. And we're going to see what progressives they bring to the table. Yeah. It should be interesting. Well, put up the tweet. Put up the tweet. Oh, yeah. So this, you guys have all seen this, right? Yeah. Pretty much all the political journalism are doing an Ocasio-Cortez crash course right now, including myself included. Laura, please tell everybody what you tweeted oh, back. Oh, yeah. I, I saw this early and I replied back and I included a link to our We the People interview with um, Alexandria last July. And I said, here's, a, here's an hour-long interview that we did last July to help you with your research just because like yeah not all political journalists are having to figure out who she is the night after she's elected and some of the top comments were like interesting so you're you're admitting that you're not following <laughs> yeah. key races yeah. Yeah. exactly that's the point and, I, and if i was uh, was her boss you know yeah. in, in, a, in a political like media outlet media. Media. you know I, I would ask her are you fucking serious why are you not informed this is an absolutely no-go yeah. for a 
the journalists, in my opinion, right? She's not allowed to talk about the progressives, and that's the thing. Right. They're not allowed to, I mean, they are not allowed. Well, they're to, allowed to if they can find a way to make them look bad, which is what they're well, desperate yeah, to do yeah. right now. Yeah, it's elective, yeah. It's like, <laughs> they're trying yeah. so hard. Hard. Like, yes. hard. And it was not. It was not only her. Uh, only Joyce outcry. It. It was all over the place. You know. If you. Oh, if, yeah. you if you. If you checked. If you search machined it, as I say it, um, th there were so many headlines with the same question: Who is Alexandria Ocasio Cortez? They were helpless. They were so helpless, and and they should be informed. Yeah. And this <laughs> absolute no go for a journalist. And this shows all the misery the journalism in, in America, yeah. what mainstream concerns is in. It was another proof. Oh, I had two things. One, email from my mother. A progressive win. <laughs> my mother, my mother, the the Hillary the first supporter. First one she knows about. We've had like a hundred. She, like... she was like, oh. <laughs> And I said, I, I know, I said she's, because she, I because I actually, I don't usually put political stuff, but since Alex and I are friends on Facebook, I could actually, you know, message her and say, congratulations, <laughs> Alex, for you did it. And, you know, so my, friend, my mom saw that. And so she had a progressive win and she, I really, I really like her. And it was just like, all right. And then I was having my teeth cleaned and my hygienist said, oh, that 28 year old who won in New York. And I'm like, she's, who knew? And I was like, People, people know the the Hillary supporting gals in my office that I have to bite my tongue about. Yeah, <laughs> um, they were all digging it. And it was like I was, it's like all right. When you see her, and you see her every other tweet now in your stream on Twitter, and all over Facebook, and it's just like okay. So what's happened yeah. is, is she she broke through. Is is this? So first of all, Oz, thank you so much for your twenty bucks. Yeah, thank you. Yes, all. Oz, thank you. In honor of Alexandria Ocasio Cortez kicking Crowley's ass, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that's awesome. I think ninety percent of the comments on that video have been, "She kicked his ass. She owned him. She destroyed him." I keep yeah, making slides yeah. of the best comments. Yeah, there's yeah, just yeah. so many good ones, and and you know, the great thing is, so Alexandria, 15. is it fifteen? Alexandria, 15. oh, fifty-eight. No, fifty. 50. It's too many <laughs> fucking slides. There it is, 50. I'm sorry, man. Right, so they're all they're mostly Alex slides, by the way. That's all she's done. Um yeah. here's some of my, my, my favorites. So Alexandria now has to be careful. She has to play the game. She can't say anything bad about anybody. She has to really watch her words because they're gonna be trying to pick her apart. Right. We, on the other hand, do not have to do that. We can call it yeah. like it is. My there's a lot of good quotes here. Share this video with as many of your liberal friends as you can. Time to shake up the Democratic Party. Um, uh, is a, he's got a lot of hot air to sell. Um, <laughs> That's good it, one. This is one of my favorites. Frozen Flames. She ate him quietly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jake says, I remember the first time seeing this interview over a year ago. That would be our interview. Yes, Jake. And immediately amazed by her. Such a tremendous inspiration. Yes. Um, Mark Brown just says, New York is too expensive. It sucks peanut brittle. All right. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> and then he also says, this guy is owned by the wealthy corporations. That's why Pelosi is scared. Hopefully, she will be next. Truth. Very yes. true. Um, what is it? I, my, my favorite one just quotes, on Reddit. <laughs> yes, this was actually <laughs> awesome. Her smile when she laughed and said, oh, on Reddit. Okay. Yeah, Great. Yeah, okay. Go for it. And keep, keep talking. <laughs> my, my other favorite, Joe is a butthole. <laughs> it's just I don't care if he can play a good song. And and here listen, I just wanna I wanna tell you why this is important. Yeah. And butthole's not that bad. Calling people <laughs> bad words is just what we do when we don't like them or they've done something to piss us off. That's and if you want to call it on being uncivil, okay. That's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Joe Crowley, for all of his niceness at the end, for his songs and dedications and good Bruce Springsteen oh, cover, which kind of pisses me off. I'm like, you had, yeah. the, you had the time as a congressperson to hone your Bruce Springsteen cover skills, you know? Yeah. I, Just for this moment. And, and, and that, that seemed a little that seemed a little prepared and rehearsed. Of course, well, you know, he was going to play it for himself. And he's like, well, if I lose, I just play it for her and look like a fucking great guy. That's how oh, you set one of those up. That's a, that's a double win. Oh, that's a double okay. win. That's, that's, it's, okay. it's either dedicated to me. And that all was going to be his homie folksy. I'm going to sing to you. That's, yeah. that's exactly little, what that is. Uh, come on, guys. A little bit of respect for our outro song today, yes? Okay. Well, 
It's not Joe the Crowley, Born to Run is our outro song. It is oh. not our outro song today. <laughs> it is not. Our, but but I just I just want to remind everybody, okay? Before we get before we go too quick into unifying and thinking people are classy, the reason Alex ran against this motherfucker is because for decades he has done nothing for the people. He's taken a shit ton of money from corporations, and those corporations are directly responsible for our income problems, for our homelessness problems, for our health care problems, for our fucking gun problems, for our corruption problems, for all the fucking problems we have. So every yeah, well, asshole asshole like live Joe, in Virginia. right and he while he was living in virginia not drinking the the poison crap water and air of the bronx right yeah, not walking not so, walking the streets until you get yeah. holes in the bottom every, every one of these motherfuckers that's going to try to play nice now is a piece of shit that we want to get rid of don't ever forget that you can smile like they do and shake their hand and be like yeah, good to meet you. Great competition. But remember what they have done to you, what they have done to this country. Okay. Don't ever forget that. Keep that rage bottled up in there while we kick their fucking asses. Don't ever forget. Joe's a piece of shit. There's a reason we're getting rid of him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alex can't say that anymore. No, no, that's all. But 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 she didn't before. She was, and this is another thing, you know. She was always articulate. She was polite, friendly. But her message was clear. She didn't need any any uh, f bombs like like we do, you know. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, and Marco Rubio, just fuck you, fuck you. Oh yeah, fuck you. I know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck yeah. you with a fucking <laughs> fuck as big as a fuck. Just fuck you. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, this, that's this, hilarious if you don't this, know what it was case. Mark Marco Rubio is just wondering why he's seeing the word fuck without <laughs> without an asterisk you know all over the place now what is right. what's happening to our country we're so in, uncivil like that's his example of like what's happening to our country we're yeah, so little, uncivil exactly little fucko Rubio yeah 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 it's it's bad it's bad yeah all it's right, bad. I just had to go off on that. Just, just for All a second. right, okay. Then we should go back to what to the reaction of the MSM, uh, maybe slide thirty-five, where we could see an impressing morning entertainment. You know, it was kind of uh, uh, aerobics or cheerleading in the morning, and you could go Mika go absolutely nuts about Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, and also Joe was yeah, he, it was a strange atmosphere. They were ah. so complete. They were so nice and lovely to her, and and Mika had had a laudatio, a, 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 a victory speech for Alexandria, and she demanded. You know, you can see it here. She ended with "Find your own message, Democrats." You know, yeah. and, she, and she said quite clearly. She said in the primaries, she uh, she said she had so much much contact to candidates and also to Hillary. She asked all of them, "And uh, what's your message? What's your message?" She didn't get a straight answer. And she said in this video, uh, it didn't take Alexandria 30 seconds to deliver her message. And yeah. it was clear and absolutely, yeah, it, it was fantastic. You know, and yeah. she's a cheerleader of Alexandria right yeah. now. You two blocked our video of this, by the way. Oh, we had, yeah. we had the video. Yeah, that uh, just you two blocked the video because we used MSNBC's stuff. It was a manual block by MSNBC. That was what I was just talking about. The, mm -hmm. the, the, and, and Joe, Joe's part, Mika's face was so disgusted, the clip that I if you guys got to watch it. But he had just spent like five minutes spouting hot air, telling us all <laughs> yeah. about his, his knowledge, yeah. his, his immense knowledge of why she won as a, as a progressive. Just like every MSM piece of shit is going to do. Well, of course she won because of this and this. We've been telling you all along, this is what's going to happen. And but yeah, yeah, Joe, fuck you. Yeah. yeah, have you, it, have, yeah. Show us clips of every time you mentioned her on your show prior to right. that day. Right. This, yeah. this, yeah. We'll wait. We'll wait. It, 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 you know, it, the, do you guys remember the video of the, I think he was a DSA member, but don't quote me on that. He was definitely not a member of any of the traditional parties. And the guy that went into the Seattle, uh, after, after the Seattle City Council um, uh, decided they were going to just do whatever Jeff Bezos asked them to do. Ah, right. And they were like, <laughs> OK, we'll back off on, on, uh, on, on the tax thing, Jeff. Sorry. And uh, he went in there and went, hey, bootlickers. Right. What up, bootlickers? Remember that guy, that quote? He was yeah. that guy was awesome. We're going to be able to say that to a lot of people. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of people. They're oh, looking at yeah. Alex's boots right now. The new ones she had to buy because she wore holes in the other ones when in this race. Mm -hmm. Just saying that. Yeah, Just saying yeah. And in the next one, in slide 36, we can see our friend Chris Hayes. Oh. Uh, ah, yeah, sh shying away from her like a vampire of the sunlight, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you're a socialist. They warned me about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got a badass here. <laughs> That's so funny. That's, <laughs> he's looking at this. Whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, we could all go too far, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then this one, do you see that face that Alex is making? She's going to be making that face a lot. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> this wasn't a bad, I saw this interview though. This one actually wasn't. Uh, bad. I think the face is mostly because she's looking into the sun. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> no, this one, this, this, uh, this. She asked some kind of kind of obnoxious questions, but nothing that Alex couldn't completely handle with a lot of joy. It was it was actually not not bad. But you know, the, the, the CNN they're really good at that 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 fake concern. Like, do you of course. really think that you can really make these? I'm just. I, I mean, I love you, but I just don't. I <laughs> because because they like, gotta make it. Alex, yeah, I mean, Rachel's really Rachel's really really good at that. Um, so yeah, that drives oh, me. Yeah. How about just ask a straight question? And just just talk. You know, don't it, it's it, it, that that overlord overlay of what the tone that they have to keep is just so obvious and so fake. Yeah. And, um, so fun. Yeah. And this and this interview also was in my perception. I saw a lot of those videos. Um, the, the first one where the tone, uh, if you look at the Hayes uh, video and uh, Morning Joe, they were all completely to, uh, polite and friendly to her yeah, because they had no clue who she was and they were carefully in the first moment. In this video, you could see that the tone already started to change a little bit. You know, she, uh, they are starting uh, to lay traps, you know, and they mm. are asking her uh, in how far she would stand behind uh, an impeachment of Trump, etc. and all this stuff, you know. They are already uh, changing the narrative. You know, it didn't, it didn't last long. Nope, nope. They've already they've already started the the slamming. Mm -hmm. This has yeah. got to be my favorite one, though. Leave it to Hannity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yes. <laughs> this and 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 he wasn't happy with this. He's like, look at that. Yeah, it's the most beautiful. Peek, yeah, I love the picture. He said, you know, he, said he said, America, look, this is your future. This is dangerous. <laughs> Medicare for all, housing is a human right, federal jobs guarantee. It's like, it's like the support. Is, 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 is it just that our filter is just so completely different? Because how can that be bad? Except, and this is, and I get, I keep getting this from people. Well, and we saw a few comments on the video. Well, that's just fine. How is she going to pay for it? <laughs> yeah. I hate that question. It's like, oh my God, we're already paying for it. The money's already there. It's just being allocated and fucked up ways to our military and corporate subsidies just change those two things those two things and get corporations to pay at least a fraction of the taxes that they owe there's plenty of money to do all of this they've got enough money to give the military budget it's what billions more than they even asked for and yet they're saying oh but that that social security boy that's really messing up our balance sheet like <laughs> fuck that you know it, and, oh. I just, and, and the base so that's that, my usually my somewhere about my answer to that that's, question that was good that's good the comments are great how dare you how dare you care for seniors darcy yes yeah yes. And, and, and look and, and look at the average age of the viewership of fox news right right what is yes. the average age of viewership of they're all old right 70s yeah, 80s. Of my, yeah. my old landlords who are in their 80s they had fox news on all day long on their huge screen and they just you know they just hannity hannity said to his audience to his viewership that it would be dangerous if someone takes care for them yeah you gotta let, let them sink in of course his viewers won't won't get this you know but uh all well, other resources being you know locked up into Somebody who's not producing anything for society or something. <laughs> yeah. Phil Britain. Yeah. yeah. Fox TV is yeah. having a fire sale on Depends because their hosts are shitting on air. <laughs> 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 They're the government support educator. Well, I guess my question is, what? Well, 
I look at it this way. You know when you have a kid and the kid wants candy mm-hmm. and you, you let the kid have some candy and then they just really want it all and you're like, fine, here you go. Have it all. And they eat all the candy and then they have a tummy ache and then you hope they learn a lesson, but really a couple of weeks later they want all the candy again. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's what we're doing with senior citizens, whoever it is voting for Trump, the people who are... You are giving yourself a tummy ache. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's a terrible analogy, but basically they're killing themselves because if they're taking away all their services, okay. If you want to accelerate the progressive movement, I'm down. If you're going to thin your own herd, mm-hmm. saves us yeah. the trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but while, while, while the rich can afford to ensconce their elderly in very posh retirement homes that Kennedy. will take their every you know need until they die right so what happens when all their base dies not in your back room but just safely and so they're taken care of so that's it's not their parents that are being when when is their base gonna i mean but their base dies and then what do they got left yeah yeah exactly well that well yeah i don't know so so then i haven't heard colbert work his spinning magic but you know he spins it he's a shill um yeah did it, was he kind to alexandria i didn't i didn't watch the video i know she had a great uh, yes, quote on I, it. I, I, I put it on because it was a yeah it was no special interview she was nice she was absolutely nice she was gorgeous we know this uh stephen colbert was stephen colbert in his colbert show but uh, um, i like the audience you know because they were completely they were not what you mm-hmm. what you hear you know and uh, yeah, well, I and think, getting a chance to explain democratic socialist, yeah, what it what that is in terms that reaches millions of people, that may that may be the one, actually most useful clip. Yes, that that she ne- could do is just explain it in non scary terms to you know to Stephen Colbert. Need, and, she, she would need two clips. She would need the Colbert clip, and she would need Sean Hannity. And the, yeah. yeah, the thing is done. <laughs> yeah. There you the, go. the What's interesting, and I, I, I had this loaded, but I don't think I can play it, obviously. If you guys want to watch something fun, is MSNBC did a, a little short on explaining the difference between democracy, Democrats, democratic socialism, uh, socialism, communism. They kind of laid them all did out. Did they get it right? They, they, did they, they get, get it right? They were very, they got it right. And, and I'm just wow. wondering, why was it easy for you to do that? now but you couldn't do it in 2016 when you were throwing monkey shit all over bernie sanders with the word socialist because it wasn't on their rundown menu of what they were allowed to talk about of course well, and and well, bernie well, wasn't bringing the ratings like you know exactly no, yeah, ratings. It, uh, yeah you know. it um and we we don't we don't i think in my opinion we don't have to forget the complete the complete story around this you know we have um we have not only the election result, you know. We have a, we have the total package with Alexander Ocasio Cortez, who is play, who is not playing, but who could, what we see here is a playbook of a Cinderella story. You know, this is Hollywood made. You know, the the, the poor girl from the Bronx climbs the ladder. You know, mm-hmm. and she, she she is dancing off her shoes. You know, to say it like yeah. this. You know, and the, the latest tweet she showed her shoes, uh, and they were in a, yeah. in a horrible state. She walked all those miles. You know, and yeah. this is. This is a story. This is a Hollywood story. And yeah. this is why the mainstream media is so excessively going after this, you know. Yeah. This is, this is one true. of the... Yeah. Was, the, was the Colbert one the one where she said that, that Trump is from Queens? Yeah, and that's the quote. He can't you, handle you a girl from the Bronx? You have this quote a little bit later. I'm yeah. sure you do. There's <laughs> <laughs> also the lipstick, like also the lipstick one. Uh, yes. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> we are not done yet. <laughs> what slide are we on? I don't even know. Okay, just... another one is I... we. Uh, you mentioned it uh, when she won uh, uh, the, the the view uh, uh, the view audience. Also, you know, yeah. I do. We'll, we'll look at that the red lipstick. But I just want to say something about that point and and comparing Bernie with Alex, and that is that. Um, so think about what Marcus just said. Right. They saw a Cinderella. St- they see a Cinderella story here. They see ratings. They see Hollywood. And, and that's great. They're going to they're going to use Alex and we're going to as, as a pr- progressive movement, Alex and us, we're going to use MSM. Right. It's a mutually using agreement. We, we all know the truth. Right. There, if, if you know, uh, the, the MSM are not naive enough to think that progressives 
you know, are buying into the bullshit. Maybe there's going to be some that'll buy into the bullshit. Progressives, especially ones like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, are well aware that MSM is completely disingenuous and full of shit, right? So there's a game being played right there. The mm-hmm. reason they're okay with, with doing the game, the Hollywood, the Cinderella story for ratings with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is because it was okay to lose Joe Crowley, but it was mm-hmm. not okay to lose Hillary Clinton. Do you see the difference there right. with Hillary right. Clinton? They were like, oh, my God, we have this fairy tale story. We have Bernie Sanders, populist movement, uprising, people doing it. And they went, we can't. It's too mm-hmm. big. It'll kill her. And we can't do that. So mm-hmm. that's the reason they didn't do the same fairy tale story Hollywood ratings. They wanted it. They wanted it so I got bad. one more. And one more yeah. reason is that because MSM is about ratings and appearances and it does not hurt that she is gorgeous, intelligent, oh, sure. well-spoken. Sure. Because even if they're saying stuff they don't want, and like somebody mentioned, they, she kind of got the bums rush off of Colbert. They didn't, you know, they, they could have done a 20-minute interview with her. But so, 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 so okay, we're, we're doing due diligence, but we're not going to let you see too much of her. But again, the, the fact that she presents so well, um, it, it, yeah, that I think that, that that plays into it because people want to see her. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, she sells better than an old white man. Definitely, yeah, right? well, and that's, yeah. And that's, that's my that's my point. That's your point. I that's mean, point. but but I mean, really, you know, Bernie Bernie Sanders was, was grandpa. I mean, he would have sold just fine. So yeah. really, when it comes down yeah, to yeah. it, yeah, Alex is a better sell. But yeah. the truth is, she's not as dangerous as Bernie Sanders was. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the one one comment yeah. that I saw in the video too was about her being quote anti-Semitic. Well, of course. Because she was against the violence in Palestine. That's the no, oldest no, no, fucking no, no. shit in the book. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, Correct. wait a minute. Yeah. Then we're all anti-Semitic. Everybody yeah. is. Yeah. Everybody yeah. is anti-Semitic. Because you know what? Israel's a piece of shit nation for what it does. And that does not make me against Jews. That makes me against Israel's government for being a piece yes. of shit. Exactly. Exactly. That's and the it's point. Against, That's she's, the you know, point. she's against the, you know, the, against the violence. Yeah, yeah, oh my God, Aaron Willington! Yes, you can't glasses. even say that in chat. Are you kidding guy, me, guy? Guy, what are you doing? You need help. You need a doctor. Oh no, my doctor. Oh, no. You know, glasses, something like this. That's like, <laughs> that's like comparing. <laughs> I think, he's, I think Aaron comparing. is joking. He can, he can I know understand. he is. I know he is. He's got to be joking. He's an ill yeah. person. Yeah. I don't know. It's if if you put Debbie in the Jar Jar outfit. I'm just gonna. <laughs> Changes everything. Cosplay. Yeah. I don't know. Just gonna. Yeah. No, okay. Let's, uh, let's stop in there. Over. I'm stopping there. Yeah. Uh, let's go which... over uh, what's on shows and let's go over to Nancy Pelosi. Uh, one of her reactions uh, after. Okay, <laughs> you realize that it's 11:06. I'm just gonna say, how much longer are we talking? To? I'm just kidding. Which until we finish, yeah, I would suggest. And um, which slide are we go? Oh my God! Of course, you always get the great you freeze frames to, with you. You have to do this, you know. And uh, this was her first reaction, I guess. She's mid stroke. Uh, right. Being asked, <laughs> being asked <laughs> what she thinks about this, and she says, "I'm a female. I'm a progressive." <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> I like the her her. That's good. I, I, I can uh, tell you what my problem is, but she won't listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> we need to Photoshop that head with the scene from, uh, uh, the, what was the scene where he's eating the brains? That movie. That's perfect. She's got the same face right there. Anthony, uh, what's his name? Anyway, it's a good movie. Clarice, right? Oh, 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 Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. That scene oh, yeah. freaks my shit. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know what's up with Nancy Pelosi other than she's just like on old robot mode. And just Oh, they're all they're, you know, they're all freaking out, you know. And she doesn't see she doesn't she 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 dismissed uh you might have a slide on this. She dismissed it as just oh, that's just one district. That doesn't that's not a big deal. Right, right. Democratic socialism isn't isn't insurging on the on the on the left. So how many thousands of people do they say registered? Within 24 hours after Alex. Oh, 35 oh. times than usual on, on right. a usual month or a week or a day. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. impressive numbers, you know. <laughs> so, Aaron, yes, we agree. I, I, it's we're. Yeah, yeah see, wins. we agree, yeah. Aaron. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. And, no. so, and welcome, Aaron. I don't think we've seen you before. So welcome. That was a nice entree into our little <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> and we have devolved into below entertainment media because now we're talking Pelosi is hotter in 1950. What do you guys, what a time travel view? Okay, I'm just not even going to go. 
<laughs> we need to get back on track. This is supposed to be about okay. civics. Yes. Civics. Yes. And making yes. fun of people that we want to get rid of in government. That's yeah. okay. what civics yeah. is. Civics, but not civility necessarily. Yes. Thank Uncivil you. civics. Uncivil civics. That's a great show. <laughs> I love that. That's our next show. That's a new show. Right. Uncivil civics. Uncivil, this is great. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. United and civil civil. And, 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 and it'll be sponsored by Maxine Waters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Adriel, Adriel could, um, could help with that show. Yes, he could. Yeah. I'd love to get Maxine. I, you know, like I said before, never really paid attention to Maxine Waters till I heard that out of her. And I was like, I like Maxine Waters. <laughs> and yes, no pros, do, she's not perfect, we know. We do civics here, Bob. Yeah. Civics. Is the is is, yeah. is 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 the the rights and duties of citizenship, and, yeah. and one of those is discussing our stupid politicians. What we need to do about them? Civics, mm -hmm. and sharing our opinions with each other, and and learning how to control our yeah, sharing opinions, learning how to control our government with Robert's rules of disorder. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's Bernie Sa Bernie Sanders. But by, by the way, you realize that cover that I had of the of the Robert's rules? That's the Ukrainian government, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to point that out. This this cover here, here. If you can see, I don't know whose butt that is, but that dude is a famous politician for his butt. Oh goodness gracious! It seems to be an Ukrainian badass, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This this was Ukrainian parliament having some problems with each other because somebody didn't know parliamentary procedure. Okay. Somebody been like point of order. He's punching the other person. They would have stopped this. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. But that guy didn't didn't sign on the dotted line as he was told. And no, okay, then you know. I, I well, exactly. That's what's going. See what happens. <laughs> See, you, you don't really get to that point in Robert's rules till it's you've expended all the rules. <laughs> but the, the the truth of the matter is, there there have been instances lately in the DPO, the, the Democratic Party of Oregon, where Robert's rules has come in. Uh, have been very important, all right? And there's there's issues between the bylaws in the Democratic Party of Oregon and the concept of democracy and and the platform, all right? So there's actually places where there's there's conflict in the way wording's written, and it needs to be resolved. And uh, at the SEC quarterly meetings, where you get all the big people together to discuss big. Democratic Party of Oregon things, that's where it really matters. That's where it really matters. And and it was used by Larry Taylor, and I don't know, I mean, he's going to have to tell the details, but I mean, they, they, they've enforced change because of knowing their shit with the rules. This is important stuff. This is the stuff you and I were supposed to get taught in school, right? How to be a part of your democracy. This is the stuff that Marcus already learned in school, right? which is why he participates in his democracy along with a whole bunch of other Germans. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, and if you, and if you look at the picture uh, quickly again, the other guys around, you know, they don't seem to be much worried about what's happening there. <laughs> on the contrary, they, they, they seem to, to place their bets on the winner, right? That's what they're doing. <laughs> Five bucks on gray suits. It's, like, it's like a, it's like a cock fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure that the the uh, the reason was a parking lot problem or something. Fortunately, like this anyway. I just got some of the most the the what? fact that you called it a cockfight. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because <laughs> basically, what's happening in our government is the progressive movement is bringing a lot of vaginas to the cockfight. And oh, it's scaring yeah. the fuck out of the cocks. Hey, that's a great <laughs> logo. Oh, this is good. It's a great tagline. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Oh, speaking of logos, John, show your shirt because this is lo oh. this is our logo wear. So we were talking about it. Yeah. I made mine with I, when I ordered mine. I made the logo so, higher. There you go. Media. Uphill Media. Yeah. Buy a shirt. We we yeah. Buy go, a to, mug. go to shop dot uphill dot uh, shop dot uphill media dot org and you can buy all that stuff at a ridiculously high price. There there's um. Uh, it's not ridiculously high when you consider that it's merchandise. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you're paying, what, 14 bucks? I don't even remember what, 27 bucks for a mug is a pretty expensive yeah. mug. All right. Yeah. But yeah, we get a we get a share of the profits and, and, and Spreadshirt gets their cut and you get um, Spreadshirt stuff. gets most of it. We get a, we get a, you know, a few dollars from every um, 
t sale. But it adds up. Surely love and a lot of get, asses too. Nice. We get we get extra if you buy a hoodie. Yeah, well, I mean, just whatever you get. But there's 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 cheap stuff too. And there's mm-hmm. other stuff. Some, the dog some stuff. the dog scarf I think is pretty cheap. The buttons yeah. are five five bucks. Buttons, yeah. Oh my gosh, Melissa H. I didn't even think about that. Oh yes, next time. I keep saying that I'm going to get off my ass and go make a bunch of these cheaper, and then have them to like hand out and stuff. I just haven't done it. And Larry would have to cough up money for that. And you heard Larry what he had to say about that. Mm-hmm. So I got to talk to Larry about that. Uh, r- real quick, I know we're still talking about Alexandria because it's the Alexandria show today, but um, we do have some big things going on besides the GIS mapping thing, uh, the solo. Here. These are the new the motives. Motives. I oh have my God. Them, which means we're ready to go. We were supposed to, I was supposed to drive up to Portland two days ago and hand these off to some ICE PDX protesters, but I think they got arrested. So <laughs> they could go the way of, of the ones that we sent to Myron Dewey. You can't lose these. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the up, you guys are paying for those. All right. You guys pay for those. It costs us about a hundred bucks a month in data rates. All right. So, you know, we need to use them. The whole point is we need to use them. And so if I can't find somebody in Portland, in Oregon in general, that wants to, you know, be a roving reporter and use that thing, we're going to, we're going to use it for some live streams too, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we have it. All right. Nice. And, and yeah. we can, we can ship it around, do stuff with it. Um, well, Ashley, Ashley can know. use it for the stuff that you guys are doing together. Right. And maybe we can use it in Europe in the near future. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that would be interesting. Yeah, it would be. Thank you, Density. I know you do. So many of you are donors and and sponsors and 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 help us out, you know, financially and with social media and just support in general. And um, I haven't sent a letter out in in June. I'm sorry. I I totally like didn't get one out to you guys i i don't like using the newsletter because i feel like it bothers everybody so i just uh, deliver a message this way but um thank you thank you for your donations really yeah you know um there were a couple gigs that i thought we were going to do in june that were paid gigs for outside work and we didn't do them they didn't happen um and so we didn't have that money and uh and we really are trying to to do more hopefully the um the unity effort we're making here with building this map so that everybody can follow it and bringing in the other groups to discuss hopefully that will help us all grow i mean um we need to we need to fund our 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 own everything our own everything if we want to win our own everything that's that's what it's about and to do so you need a t-shirt so buy a t-shirt everybody (laughs) you gave Oh, Lynn, you gave Nina a piece of paper with the Uphill Media website on it. Thank you so much. Oh, I, great. I know because we don't have any, we we don't have any uh, um, business cards. I should have those. I should link that up to like a template on, make one and stick it up somewhere where everybody can make them. I know, I know. It's just all this little stuff that you know during the day, and I'm like, oh yeah, that would be great to do, and then I ended up doing something else. So, thank you guys. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Nina actually does know who we are. Yeah, she does. And and she she's emailed us and you've messaged her on Yeah. I mean, I I communicate social. with with I, we have occasional communication with our Revolution National when it has to do with events and and you know, we've talked about it before. I just emailed them about um stuff we're doing. They you know, the unless they're interested in something from us, the response is generally just a that's nice, you pat on the back. That's nice, great. Away. Just fine. Keep doing what you're doing. The, it's really valuable. Right. The point for me is to keep in touch. These organizations, we need to keep in touch. Let everybody know what we're doing, right? Because we yeah, at we, some we, point, they're going to need us and they'll remember like, oh yeah, those nice folks that well, work out of their basement. And they do videos and they can connect us and they can cover this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Back when we had Scott, we got a lot more visibility for that because he would be at least in the Midwest or locations in person. It makes a difference. Totally. Sorry, Jilly Love. I totally understand. Everybody's in the same boat. I, I'm not becoming a democratic socialist right now because my understand. First of all, I just I didn't become one because I thought I had to be one or the other, and that's not the case. 
You can be a card-carrying Democratic Party of Oregon member and a card-carrying Democratic Socialist of America member. Or, it's like an add-on. It's an add-on. It's extra, like a caucus member or something. But mm -hmm. my understanding is, and you can tell me if it's wrong, that there is a sliding scale payment involved. And until I get paid, I literally have zero dollars. And so hopefully the next week that check will show up. You still watching, Larry? And... Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, that, we just, that we just had someone donate one hundred and fifty dollars. Holy crap! Really? Yeah, I just saw the email. Wow! Thank you. It was Dennis. Mm. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis. Dennis, you are absolutely great, man. Thank you so much. You guys are so generous. Thank you so much. I appreciate wow. that. And Joyce Milberg, thank you, Joyce. I donated twenty-seven dollars. Thank you, Joyce. Yeah, thank you. Lots of activity in Twitter. I, I got added to, thank you, Adriel Hampton, who added uh, Uphill Media or Bernie 2016 TV on Twitter to this group of a bunch of people tweeting a bunch of stuff. And it's actually a bunch of people I already followed already or retweeted stuff, but now we're in this group. And I, I'm not a very good member. If anybody <laughs> want, really like loves Twitter and is obsessed with it and hangs at home and can afford to do that and live and wants to work our Twitter, I'm more than happy to, to talk to you because it could use more effort than I'm putting into it and... I'm not really sure I'm doing the best for the brand. <laughs> so yeah. just... well, it would be great if we could, we've got our hoot suite now. It'd be great if we had someone who would, who knows how to do something like that and could help us with our, just, um, they would be just our regular tweets that, that talk that, that promote old shows. Like, you know, we could, we could, we could have regular tweets that go out and say, Hey, here's Mike McCabe. Hey, here's you know, so-and-so for the people who are still running. It'd be great to have a kind of a cycle of, promotion of our old content because otherwise it just sits back there in the in the archive yeah. so um if anybody is you know, interested in doing something like that and you know how to use a scheduler like the suite or hubspot or whatever they're all kind of the same or we're That'd be super cool. Mm -hmm. or we will train you and it's like it's and it's it is totally something that i could do i already do that for three um international clients all day long at my regular work and i just can't fit another she's too busy session she's too busy and, th so. and thank you guys and all the nice comments towards density and everybody we do have a dennis and a density we do have both <laughs> well density is dennis no oh no I mean, that's right dennis and dennis. dennis with a z yes okay yes yes it's a, what was I, getting? Now I forgot what i was gonna say i was gonna say something how was it i don't know ah, you reminded me about something coming up and i wanted to mention it shit let's talk about our things the solo and the gis stuff we have a slide at the Oregon planning meeting and you already talked about Sunday. I did. I think it was another slide. Hi, Milo. Dog Milo's coming in. Oh, no, there mm -hmm. was something else I wanted to mention to you guys. And now I don't remember what it was, but that's all right. Do you want to talk about any of these other slides, Marcus, in particular? I think we can go quickly through them. Uh, we got, of course, the uh, congratulation coming from Bernie Sanders to Alexandra Ocasio. Uh, yeah. You know, extraordinary upset victory tonight and yeah of course he's uh he's happy about her you know <laughs> and i took this from a video or from his facebook uh, uh post uh you can find all the links from the videos we cannot play today due to copyright stuff with youtube and the mainstream media <laughs> under the video and you can watch them later yeah. there's some pretty cool stuff in there all right then we got a, another tweet another message from uh, susan surrender nice who is uh, who was arrest <laughs> who was arrested yesterday or the day before I don't know uh, in the uh, in the protest against uh, against the ice uh, ice mm -hmm. uh, I hope she is free uh, again and uh, yeah of course she's enthusiastic about Alexandra has been also fuck yeah people over the machine congrats at Ocasio 2018 for proving that democracy is still possible yeah Susan yes, great yes. And then we're coming to the master himself, the orange one, of course, uh, and uh, his comment on uh, Joe Crowley's defeat. And uh, of course, he takes it personal and uh, everything in the world is only turning around him. And uh, Joe Crowley made the big mistake that he was not nicer to, to him and uh, always went after him. Uh, <laughs> Perhaps he should have been nicer, more respectful to his president. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. You know the big, and the biggest thing about that is that Ocasio made enough news that it came across his Twitter, right? That's basically what that <laughs> right. is. Oh, I gotta say something about this. Thumbs. Yeah. You know. Yes. And uh, being asked by Stephen Colbert on the Colbert Show in how far she would be nicer to him, 
She had only to say, I don't think he knows how to deal with a girl from the Bronx. Well, we know that. Um, We know that. (laughs) Yeah. Or girls in general. But yeah. Nice quote. And then what's this? We got, oh, you want to talk about the Vogue piece real quick? Yes. And now we can can see how deeply the mainstream media went on the, uh, uh, jumped on the uh, Ocasio train. Uh, You can see it here, the Teen Vogue who are uh, bringing an article about the color of her lipstick and what, uh, yeah, what, uh, what brand it is and, uh, you know, all the important things in life. And, uh, yeah, she is already in Teen Vogue. <laughs> yes. yeah. I, think, uh, I think it's hilarious to see this. Well, Teen Vogue has actually become, in recent um, times, uh, quite the progressive mag. They've put out some pretty decent, heavy articles. Um, really? And, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I was not aware. Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not the target group, so I don't. Didn't, I didn't know. I believe it was uh, Glenn Greenwald and a couple other people uh, with some uh, independent order writer. They were like, "Take a look at what Teen Vogue's writing these days." Interesting. Yeah. May have been Dan Rather though too, but either way, it, yeah, they're, they're actually trying to go for some substance, and and I had no idea that this was a DSA color or anything. It's interesting. They yeah. had to find a tie-in, right? Find a tie-in. Yeah. What can we tie it to? And what's this? This last one. Oh, that's yes. the, that's the color of the lipstick. Oh, yeah. Yes, this is yeah. This is her tweet or reply. <laughs> you know, she referred to it, and uh, yeah. yeah, she commented on it. And we ta- we already talked about the the BS uh, about her uh, website and the slam on that, right? Did we talk about? We that? talked about it in green room. Oh, we did. Yes. So just to clear the air around that, real quick, everybody, um, uh, there was a, an immediate slam. Oh, that's you, not you and me. There's an immediate slam uh, on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez about something that changed on her website with regard to her uh, war policy. And she immediately responded, I don't control it. That's a volunteer-driven thing, and I'm going to find out immediately what the fuck's going on. I haven't read the new content, but my understanding that it is that it's been changed, and it's even stronger than it was before. So any opportunity they will get to slam her on anything they will. She is under a bright spotlight with a microscope and and she knows it now. You know, this is the this is the same kind of bullshit scrutiny regardless of of what we think of his job as president that Obama went through. Mhm. Yes. Same kind of surprise they haven't started a birther fucking movement, you know? But I cannot be be less worried about all of this because I know uh that Alexandria will deal with this. She knows exactly. Though she is not experienced, she knows exactly what's going on. Right. And this we, we could and this we could already see from the first interview she gave, where she did, where she knew where the uh, the traps are and she uh, reacted uh, in her comments. She knows what she's doing. She knows and her district about it. too, and that's yes. what, that's that's what really benefits her. She has a deep knowledge of what's going on in her district and what her people want, and that's what she can always you know fall back on. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yes. Oh, I forgot to I get a backup real quick. I forgot to say this, you guys. Um, uh, Jeff, Are you going to play any videos of the, the videos that Lynn and Melissa? I don't have any of those ready. I just got them this morning. Oh, okay. sorry. Okay. No, I, I I need to put them all into a compilation. I don't have any of this oh, stuff okay. ready. Um, uh, Jeffrey Pearson, I'm well aware that there are actions going on all over Oregon. It requires two people with the time and the willingness to be trained. That's what I'm looking for. Two people that, that want to have this stuff shipped to them and be willing to you know, learn how to do it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm trying to reach out to organizations, whoever you are. Bernie PDX, I would have thought you would have responded to me by now, have enough people going on. I don't know why you're siloed. Um, Our Revolution Southern Oregon, if you want to use it, reach out to me. Anybody protesting ICE, doing anything anywhere, let, reach out to me. Two people will train you. One of those person's a camera person, the other person functions as the reporter, and, and we'll send you a rig right? if, if you want to work with us. That's, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And now mm-hmm. I can't remember what my second one was. There's somebody else following in here. Brom says they're doing a live stream tonight. Um, on uh, Kelly Lane is. Now I can't remember what it is. I don't know. What, what are you guys talking about tonight, Brom? On Kelly Lane's channel? You're talking about something. Oh, and you're dropping a bunch of stuff. Someone slammed her for being a bartender? They're like all over that picture of her. Uh, from the website th- that was like great press i thought for the but i'm sure somebody slammed it a year ago she was a bartender and now she's you know right 
Well, Joe was trying to use that as a lack of experience, right? Yeah. We need an experienced corrupt politician in office, not somebody who hasn't been corrupted yet. The big difference between her and Obama, the reference that I was making, he had already taken a whole bunch of fucking money from a whole bunch of people. Her entire mm -hmm. campaign is us. Mm -hmm. She owes us. Yeah. I think that's fucking awesome. Average donation, $22. Was that really? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, you'll be talking about uh, Ocasio and our momentum. That's fantastic. Join that tonight. What else you want to go over before we get out of here, Marcus? Anything? You want to say anything else about uh, your girl? If you don't have nothing left, I don't have anything left. Laura Live and Good, anything you'd like to add to our conversation on anything? Nope. Right. Excellent show. Yeah. Well. And we are, oh, and we are going to um, kind of lining up to start up We the People again. We're kind of identifying uh, upcoming primaries. We've got Mike McCabe from Wisconsin that we want to have back because yeah. he's yes. been doing great. His video gets what did you say the most you know I, just consistent view the second most viewed it's wow. i don't understand the, the, no it's beyond that okay yeah. i i study youtube analytics constantly because i've been doing this for years and and you know you pay attention to what's going on i've never seen statistics like i have on mike mccabe's we the people interview it's mm -hmm. off the charts every it, the audience retention Okay, normal audience retention for a show, apps, there's absolute and relative, right? Mm -hmm. Neither is generally, I mean, if, if you're getting above average audience retention more than once in your show, you're kicking ass. If you're managing to hold your audience in an hour long show for 20 minutes, you are golden. That is, 20 minutes is amazing. Most things can't even hold anything for like 10 minutes, all right? Especially boring political content shit, mm -hmm. right? Hmm. Mike McKay, and, and when we have good stuff like Bernie Sanders, you know, Nina, okay, then we get 18 minute average view times, 22 minute average view times, all right? But the relative audience retention and the relative and, and, and the, the absolute always drops off. It, it never stays above like 50%. It always drops off. That, that's just normal. You see that with all videos. Some reason. Whatever Mike McCabe said in that hour was so amazing, so incredible, that it has an hour, uh, an hour and two relative relative audience retention. That means every person that watches that video and more is watching the entire video. I've never seen statistics like this. It, it is uh, so we got to have this guy back on because apparently he he is an anomaly and supernatural when it comes to speaking on YouTube and getting statistics. So. Can you all tell me, in, in, is he, you said Wisconsin, Laura Livengood? Governor, Go Wisconsin. Is he huge? Yeah. Is he got a chance? Has everybody heard well, of him? He's, uh, he seems to be, um, we've had people from his campaign, I think Kendra is, sometimes watches. Oh, um, Kendra. That, uh, I don't think she's here today, but she's, um, she might be watching this later on. So if, if so, hi, Kendra. And so, yeah, there's just been a, a lot of grassroots support for him. And yet we'll definitely have him on. We've got, uh, so his primary, I believe, is August 7th. Let me double check. We only have one primary in July, and that's Tennessee. Did we do Mark Whitmire from Tennessee? We did. I think that's we yeah, did. So we should have Mark Whitmire back on because I'm friends with him on Facebook. So that's the only primary in July. So that's like. Well, and, and so I didn't mean, like, I'm not putting down Mike for, you know, not, you know, I'm just saying. That's incredible. I mean, he is a progressive. No. He was a super progressive. Was he green? Yeah, no, his hit. That, that was a great interview. We really enjoyed talking to him. Yeah. So on this yeah. August seventh, we've got Washington, of course. So we've got a lot of right. our Washington candidates that we right. want to bring back on. Kansas, Michigan, and Missouri. Kendra. And then the week after that, Connecticut, um, Minnesota, Vermont, and Wisconsin. So Vermont, we want to get Levy Sanders on. I made him wait until after California. <laughs> he made election. him wait. Yeah, we made him wait. <laughs> <laughs> not really but yeah so uh, Kendra real quick uh, he's tied for second place with three others in the primary in Wisconsin Mike McCabe all right so is that do you guys have one of those two people things or does he have to get into first place there that's so cool Kendra was watching yeah see yeah and I remember who okay. yeah that is cool so Kendra tell you know and if you want to come on and talk to us about it. You're welcome to do that. You tell us what's going on in Wisconsin. We'd love to have a, a, a correspondent Wisconsin. Let us know. Info at Uphill Media. That'd be yeah. great. You know, as we're, as we're kicking more into this. Um, 
We're talking about, oh, Melissa just asked who is the great interview. We're talking about Mike McCabe. Yeah, Mike McCabe. It's it's on. Uh, um, it's, and I get his emails, and he's very good at the email marketing yeah. as well. I, I, I heard you, Dennis. I will we'll reach out to Abdul. I've tried to reach out to him a couple times before and have not and yes. not come back. But he's in Michigan, and that primary is on the seventh, also. So that would be a, that would be a good one. I'd love to get one. I'd love to have someone from every state. Sure. Now that now that we've gotten some of the some of the big uh, primaries out of the way, I can really focus on to see if there's there. We we got you know Washington, Michigan, Missouri. We had um, Alexandra, the one who's running against. Oh shoot. Alexandria, Alexandria Earl. Oh, Angelica Earl. Angelica Earl. Angelica that's Earl. it. That's it. See, I got Alexandria on the brain. No. Sorry, Angelica. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Abdul Al Said. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, to talk mm -hmm. to him, too. There, there's the, the So the problem is it's not. OK, so if, if you back up, Laura Live and Good does all she can to reach out and book the people we can problem mm -hmm. is a lot of times they're not responsive a lot of times they don't get back to us anytime soon with dates that mm -hmm. make sense um mm -hmm. and you know the other thing is we just actually can't reach out to everybody so mm -hmm. um it kind of needs to work the other way if you're a progressive and you're running or you work with a progressive that's running and you want airtime you need to reach out to us <laughs> okay because we don't do this for ratings Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody here is getting paid six figures to get ratings. So you got to reach out to us so that we can schedule something between mm -hmm. our work times and stuff. And that's you know, that would really be helpful. It would be so yeah. much better if Laura's like, oh, we got so many people want to come on. We'd I'll book them if if yeah. they if you come, we will produce. That's. And Melissa, yes, yes we, we would love to interview a progressive candidate for governor yes. here in Vermont. Sure. That primary is not until August 14th. Of course, this is the perfect time. So you know where to find me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Is that Jeff? That guy? The, I think that's Jeff Ehler. I don't I know. I think that's what I'm talking about. I don't know. There's so many people. There's so many people. We can't. And there's someone from Hawaii that you wanted me to reach out to, too. Right. There's a progressive in Hawaii that, um, man, I forget how the. You know, somebody told me on Twitter, you need to have her. It's like, yes, we do. Yes. Tell her to reach out. <laughs> what is their primary? <laughs> help us help you. I, I, I love it. But thank you. Thank you all for being here. This has been a good conversation. Um, you guys are really Hawaii great. Hawaii is August 11th. 58 oh, people uh, Saturday. watching. 58 people watching. Where do all you people Holy come from? <laughs> Where, people Where have you been? Is this Where have you been? Is this the Ocasio <laughs> bump? Like there's the cold bear yes, bump, but this is way better. This is a Casio bump. The, the fact I think, that, I think I think with another card we would have even drawn more, right? If we had, if we would have uh, uh, Alex on the card, I, yeah. I I'll just we'll start using it for ratings. Just yeah, yeah, we're using it for we're not doing it for the ratings. <laughs> you know. Well, thank you to all that are here. I mean, there's like 58 of you watching, which is the biggest audience we've had in years um, mm -hmm. for this show. Please know that this is one show on this channel and this channel is open towards members of the progressive movement this this channel is a 501c3 this show is just put together by volunteers i'm one of them okay and we encourage people to build teams and create their own programming. That's what this platform is for. So we've done a progressive Washington show, a progressive Oregon show, a progressive California show. They're all series that run based on volunteers. We, we were doing uh, two We the Peoples a week, um, an hour-long interview series. We've interviewed hundreds of progressive candidates over the last three years. We've broadcast hundreds of rallies, thousands of hours of, of view time of the progressive movement. And we can do more, including more shows, more series, more interviews, more content, if you sign up and help us volunteer. That's, and, and that's what we need. We need people, right? I do this full time. This is my job. And I am paid fat stacks for it. No. No. <laughs> I, no this is three digits. Three digits. I, I have a three figure <laughs> salary. That's what I have. Three, three figure salary. Um, yeah. And, uh, uh, th but that's okay. If I want you guys to make it so that I don't have any time to do this. 
Yeah. And then we and then we'll have to improve. I mean, th- grow. We'll have to make more. This that's what we're here for. That's what this platform mm-hmm. is here for. I built Thanks, this. Thanks, Vegematic. Fit Vegematic. Yeah. To Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Right. Who is that? Vegematic. Nice. Thank you. Twenty dollars. Welcome, Vegematic. I don't know that I've seen you here before. Welcome. I've seen Vegematic. I remember you. Okay. There's a lot of names that are coming back from a long time ago. I have somebody yeah. on Twitter was like, "Hey, John, I was with you in 2015." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, Jank, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> a little fun. It's a little fun. Yeah. <laughs> if if TYT gets to be the home of progressives, what are we? That's what I want to know. Are we like the garage of progressives? Yeah. That's fine. I'll yeah. be the garage. Because you know why? Shit gets done in the garage. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we, are the birds, we are the bird's nest of the progressives. You know, I'll take a rush, but thank you. I get garage. what you get. The Bernie yeah. bird, you know, this, the Bernie bird, you know, we're the nest. And, we have yeah. nests in the garage. Yeah. And the next generation, you know, they are starting to fly. What are you guys talking about now? Some lively conversation going on here. Oh, so Jenk, uh, here's Aaron here. Uh, Jenk already interviewed the Hawaiian uh, candidate. Very cool. Good. Yeah. 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 I w- Love to love to do more of those. Love to do more of those. Anyway, we're gonna get out of here. It's eleven thirty nine. We're late. Thank you all for being Hi. here. Um, to yeah. those of you who are new to the program, just know that there are other programs. They're much better than this one. This is just a Saturday for fun program. We talk about stuff and we try to relax a little bit and and not be as um, uptight and freaked out about the the rise of fascism in in the U.S. And, and so that's why this is the way it is. The other shows we're doing, the other things we're doing are much more geared towards knowledge, civics, um, moving the progressive movement forward and all of those things. And um, I really appreciate your donations and really appreciate all of your time and effort to help keep this going. Um, I could not be prouder of what Bernie 2016 TV has become and of the amazing group of people that makes it function every fucking day. So thank you all so very much. Um, Marcus, what are we getting out of here with? What is this tune here? Yes, as tomorrow, uh, we're going to Canada. And as tomorrow, the new tariffs are starting in Canada. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was thinking it was, a, it was a good idea to go out today with a Canadian band, Arcade Fire. And uh, they are pretty known. They uh, won, were nominated for Emmys in 2012 with the album. We are listening a song to the front, uh, uh, The Suburbs. Uh, was nearly awarded uh, to, to win it. And uh, they are coming from, a, it's a family band more or less. Uh, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's a married couple with a, a, with a younger brother of the, uh, of the female of R- Regine Cassange. I hope I pronounced it correctly. And uh, That's who Arcade doing... Fire is? That's who they are, really? Yes, they are Wynn Butler and Regine Cassange. Huh? Uh, uh, Wynn's younger brother, William Butler, Richard Reed Perry, Tim Kingsbury, and Jeremy Gara. And uh, they, they are multi-instrumentalists, and um, they are uh, presenting a, a unique indie style. Uh, it is, a, a, some describe it as art rock, dance rock. I chose for today a synthy pop uh, track. Uh, quite su- surprising for me, because usually I don't like synthy music. But this one is great, I think. Uh, this is Sprawl 2, and I hope you guys like it. All right. Interesting. I, I, I like some of Arcade Fire's music, but I, I heard recently they really sucked it bad on SNL Live, which happens to bands okay. every once in a while. They, they bomb it big time. Um, yeah. So I don't know. The last band I heard bomb big time was um, uh, Simple Minds. When they were when they were at the height of their career with "Don't You Forget About Me" and they went on Saturday Night Live and poor Jim Kerr couldn't hear himself and sang the whole thing remarkably horrible, and oh, uh, gosh. but anyway, well, not everyone's meant for life. Not everyone's meant for life. <laughs> just just you know when that happens, it's a terrible thing, right? They didn't mean for that to happen. It's awful. But um, that's just a long story. I just wanted to tell you that I, that I don't know. Anyway. You guys are, your comments are hilarious today and wonderful. Mm-hmm. Thank you all so much. You really did put me in Thank the much better mood. That's awesome. Thank you for picking the song, Marcus, and doing all the other work you do to make this particular Saturday show happen. Laura Live and Good, thank you for everything you do. 
Happy well, Independence Day, everybody. Oh, yeah. I know yeah. This, this is not Happy the, Independence Day. Next, uh, next Wednesday. I know it's you know, not a particularly fun time to celebrate being American, but at least we can ce celebrate what little independence we have. I thought about that. I thought about that. I was, I was depressed about the whole concept of the 4th of July as well, but really... The 4th of July is celebrating revolution, and that's what we're mm -hmm. engaged in right now. So fucking mm -hmm. A. Happy 4th of July. Alexandria yeah. Ocasio just won, and the revolution is on mm -hmm. its way. Right? And Progressive way. We're in the course of human events. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's so do it right this it. time. Yeah. Yes. Let's do it right this time. Yeah, add some women in there. All right. Here's the song. See everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, play with mm -hmm. Can't even explain to you.